Hey, welcome back to the channel. So if you have a recent Thunderbolt 3 Mac, you may or may not know that you can boost your graphics performance by using an external graphics card. Now what's not supported is Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 1 based Macs. Now I've shown you a Thunderbolt 2 Mac on a 2014 Mac Mini. Uh, I've shown you that work and how to set that up. I'll put a link up here if you wanna check out that video. But today we are taking that one step further and looking at this on a 2013, 2012 MacBook Pro that only has Thunderbolt 1. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to set that up and then in another video, do some benchmarking and talk about some real world performance. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified when I put that benchmarking video up. Now before we get started, there is some hardware you're gonna need and I'll have links down in the description to what I used or something similar if what I used is no longer available. But you are gonna need a graphics card, obviously. Uh, if you're getting a recent graphics card, get an AMD card because in the last few versions of Mac OS, Apple has dropped support for NVIDIA, so you can't even get those NVIDIA web drivers you used to be able to get. You're gonna need an eGPU enclosure. Definitely get a Thunderbolt 3, even though we're doing this on Thunderbolt 1. Get a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure so you can use that in the future. The next two things you're gonna need are a Thunderbolt 2 cable and a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. Now, just be aware there's a lot of them out there and not all of them work in this setup. I had to go through a few of them, but if you wanna be safe, just get the ones that I have linked down below and you should be good to go. All right, so that's the hardware. Now let's start talking about the software. And the first thing you're gonna to need to do to get this going is to disable SIP on your computer. If you're not sure if it's enabled or not, you can boot up your Mac, go into terminal, and type csrutil space status. Hit enter and it'll give you the status whether it's enabled or disabled. If it's disabled, you're good to go. You can continue on to uh, the next section, but if it's enabled, you'll need to restart your Mac, hold down command R, it'll boot into recovery, and then you just open up a terminal there and type in csrutil space disable, hit enter, It'll go and disable SIP for you and prompt you to restart. Do that and we're ready to go with the rest of this. So like I said, Mac OS has built in support for eGPUs, but only for Thunderbolt 3 Macs. So what we need to do is we need to trick it into allowing support for Thunderbolt 2 and Thunderbolt 1. And we're gonna do that with a script called Purge Wrangler. I'll have a link down in the description to the Purge Wrangler site. I didn't write this. I have nothing to do with this script. I just know it works. So I'm providing that information to you. Now on that site is detailed information on how to set this up. So I highly recommend that you read through that information, especially if something that I show you in this video doesn't work. Look for it on that site or do a Google search. Somebody has probably run into the problem. What I'm gonna show you has worked for me on several different Macs though. Now the easiest way to get this going is to go out to the Purge Wrangler site, find the instructions, copy the line that will download it, install it and run it for you and paste that into a terminal window. So we're gonna do that here. It's gonna download and then it'll launch the menu. So at this point, I'm assuming that you've already put together the hardware, you've put your card inside the eGPU, you've hooked up the cables. Don't hook them to your computer yet because when Purge Wrangler runs, it's gonna bring us to a menu. And the only thing we really need to worry about that on this menu is item number one. When you hit that, it's gonna ask you to plug in the eGPU at this point. Go ahead and do that and it should auto detect and automatically set it up for you. Uh, that's what it's done in most cases for me. And after that, it's gonna prompt you to restart. If it doesn't automatically detect your GPU, then it's gonna have you uh, go through and manually set it up. This is where finding that documentation is gonna come in handy because you'll need to know what settings to use for whatever card you're using. But once you set it, manually set it up or it auto detects, restart your machine and when you come back, it should automatically launch your eGPU. Now you'll know if your eGPU is being used or not because in the title bar at the top, you'll see a little icon for the eGPU. If you click on that, it'll list the graphics card that you have inside that enclosure. 
And if you see that in there, uh, you're good to go and it's utilizing that. Now there's some applications that won't automatically use this eGPU, but you can force them to. If you go to your applications folder, right click on the application, go to get info, you're gonna see an option in there to use the, prefer the external GPU, select that and then exit out. And now when that application launches, if you have the eGPU hooked up, it'll use that graphics card instead of the built-in one. So that's all the hardware and software setup that we need. Again, if you have any problems, something didn't work as expected or as shown in this video, make sure you check out that Purge Wrangler site or do a Google search. Chances are if you have an error or somebody has had that error at some point, and we'll have a solution for that. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up or subscribe if you found this useful or informative. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.